Okay, finally made it on in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to game number one, our best of three 1v1 series between Dubin and Pavlos. Philothanic and I are both here bringing you commentary today. I recommend if you're watching live to tune into his stream as who knows how my ISP feels like as operating today. So, hello, Philothanic. Hey. Hopefully you've had time to look at this map. Yeah, this, one was, we got going on. this one's pretty Our interesting. Um, Dubin's going to found before I have time to commentate on it. I'm sorry, Pavlo. <laughs> yeah. And then Dubin right after. So both players are going next to aluminum and long-distance mining their iron. Wow, that's an interesting choice to me, especially with how many tiles. Dubin's going to back off of one of the tiles he committed to iron. They're actually fighting over the same patches of iron. I really like Pavlos in some ways selecting this medium just to get in the way of strong iron for Dubin mm -hmm. but steel very very expensive they can get away with doing this distance mining and still have steel active initially aluminum also starting expensive but Pavlos I don't like his decision to commit to an aluminum mine this early in the game as aluminum is always going to fall from its $40 price so fast especially with how much he smashed could have had two steel mills instead, just something to think about. Yeah, the other thing I'd be, I would be thinking about as a nuke flies down, something we didn't mention, so Pavlos now is operating off a single trace, was um, perhaps going for these split medium carbon tiles, considering that iron's just so terrible. We had, there's only one other medium iron on the map. The robotics HQ has been upgraded. Yeah, that would have been, would have been an option as well. I wonder what Pavlos is going to do from here. Pavlos basically in a lot of ways just down a claim could however commit to the additional low iron on hq2 to make sure he's going to have plenty of that just for a little not even plenty but some income of iron and also cuts off dupin from his adjacency which he costs him a lot as well instead dead. it's just gonna be the medium the medium iron i guess this tile you can turn it into a windmill later it is fortunately right next to a cliff it's not yeah. a completely lost cause and uh, with two robots, that power price should start creeping up soon. As Pavlos likes, you'll want to see him put down a second steel mill, like you were saying. HQ has been upgraded. Yeah, I really hate having this individual steel mill. There's even... He does have one claim left over. He has enough iron income right now to fund the one. He doesn't have enough to fund two just yet. I do wonder if this water claim was worth it. Yes, he got the medium water, but once again nukes are available so was it worth it to have the medium water now as opposed to having some extra iron now when iron's already costing 74 dollars a piece pavlos does protect his other medium iron tile so dubin won't be able to nuke it immediately dubin also in hq2 going for the low water right next to pavlos just trying to cut off any future potential adjacency and uh dubin also has one more Oh, wait, no, that's Pablo, sorry. Yeah, but Dubin still has one more claim he's sitting yeah. on, too. Yeah, Dubin hasn't committed all those claims just yet. He is going to go ahead and mutiny away the water from Pablo. So this is going to give Dubin just a pretty large chunk of water. Reasonably valuable, especially with the adjacency bonuses. Should be worth it for a mutiny. But Dubin making sure to be on that from, from the very beginning of this game. Dubin noticing that Pavlos is not going into another steel mill and deciding to build a third of his his own. Um, he's doing this just as steel starting to drop a little bit in price. Yeah, the third steel mill could still work out okay though, as both players, even if steel keeps dropping in price for the time being, eventually these players so... are going to be looking to hit their upgrades at which point steel is going to be significantly more valuable. As long as you aren't selling it through this period, I'm totally fine with having all these steel mills online. So uh, one other thing, we didn't get to mention this. Uh, this was originally a Chinese colony. It has decided to diversify its holdings, now putting down three offices and two machine shops. So it's consuming power, glass, and electronics. That's part of the reason why this power price has crept up to 211 and counting. Yeah, certainly is contributing quite a bit. Do want to point out, Dubin has taken a pretty solid cash lead at this point. It does look like Pavlos used an EMP, is trying to create an iron problem for Dubin in particular. Uh, Nuka already going to land on his trace, or on his low at this point, knocking it down to trace. Still has enough, though, to keep a couple of steel mills active. I am wondering if it would be worthwhile for Pavlos 
to transition his currently frozen mine into something like a wind turbine? That's what I'd like to do. If yeah, I it's only to... moderate, but Carbon it's still right something. Now it's really cheap. Yeah. It's possible maybe maybe a solar panel would be a little bit better. I don't know. Your opponent is in carbon at this point, so do you really want to drive up that price? But regardless, that iron mine, not going to be doing a whole lot, just sitting around costing costing some power. Dubin is the first to HQ3 off of a little bit of water play over here, and it looks like he's going to move into a couple wind turbines as he did pick up some carbon with his last claim in HQ2. So now that, yeah, uh, this should set him up really well, as long as he can get these the online. online. Pavel's black market cooldown is up, and Dubin has... Uh, both players are up, so we'll see if Pavlos can... is going to prioritize hitting Dubin's power before Dubin can defend it. Yeah, that is an option for Pavlos right now, although it's fading away rather rapidly. Dubin does have the cash if he would like to. He can sell down his carbon, go ahead and grab a goon squad. That's exactly he what he's going to get done. Good for him to get that done because power is getting out of control. Lots and lots of debt for Dubin. He needs all three of these online right now to start paying down that debt. Pablo swapped out his trace into a uh, iron into a solar panel. Fine with that. He still. What's really he nice. Still has what's another nice use of the robotic bonus is the fact that he still gets the adjacency. Yes. On the medium, so he's still getting the extra 0.75 iron there. Just without the trace tile, would be nice to see him do it on the other line, in my opinion, as well. <laughs> yeah, he's currently going for a geothermal event. Which is interesting considering how little steel production he had until this point, going into two more steel mills. Yep. Wants to get extra steel online. This is just continually, though. It seems to be having problems with with this particular resource in particular because of just taking that aluminum right at the start of the game. He was stuck in that tile. He wasn't set up where he could make rotations at all. And there was just no need for that. He was already going to be down a claim from having found it first. You got to be careful with every single one in a game where you're robotic. Need to be using those to their best the ability. While we were talking about business. both players, Dubin won a hacker array for 12,000 and is immediately hacking up power going into an energy shortage, which will start in 6-5 seconds. That could help him out with his debt problem in particular. His opponent only in the one shortly. solar panel for the time being, even with this flare having been active for quite some time, it has not been enough for the power price to actually crash out just yet. So Dubin can keep this high and keep his surplus consistent. He's even got a mutiny stored up, I imagine, for this solar panel. This could work out very, very well for him, and power games can make for very short games when a situation like this happens. Okay, this move by Pavlos, putting down the single farm and then rotating his single steel mill into a farm. Um, questionable. Said, qu yeah, questionable. That's that's the word we'll use for it. Questionable. Probably was thinking about going into food and then decide, wait, decided, uh, you know, I should have two. But um, put those next to each other next time. That is the trick. I mean, originally one was a steel mill, but that's the kind of thing you want to be thinking ahead about, right? Is, I've got food down, I kind of want to have two food tiles, it'd be nice to have some adjacency. Got to make sure that you're thinking all the way through those steps, rather than just, I want food, I'm going to put down a farm. Yeah, to be fair, it is easy to make those sorts of little small mistakes when you think you are behind, but uh, Pavlos is actually catching up in every measure but debt. Oh, he's still on HQ behind. Sorry, I didn't notice Dubin finally made that upgrade. I take that back. That was yeah, just a little bit behind. Yeah, he did manage to four. And Dubin also managing to get right back into a power surplus for the time being. He's at plus 0. 0.35. And I imagine once that third turbine comes online, possibly even his fourth manages to recover from the freeze in about a minute. It's, Dubin could start pulling in a lot of cash. This power price is absolutely ridiculous. 560 and the shortage is still going. Yep. Just multiple shortages having occurred. I don't know if they were both hacks from Dubin. I'm going to go ahead and check very quickly during this auction. Yeah, two hacks from Dubin so on power thus far. Looks like he stopped now. Now I want to see more. Keep going, Dubin. This is fun. <laughs> Dubin is... 
holding on to that mutiny, not for the solar panel, but for the geotherm, which Pavlos has not defended. And unfortunately, that 24K claim auction that Pavlos took just pushed him down into D-Debt. Yep, that is going to be a problem. Geotherm goes Dubin's way. He's now running four power surplus, uh, getting $2,000 of debt paid off per second right now. In 10 seconds, that's going to start turning into cash, and I imagine maybe about 60 seconds later, we could see the end of this game, the rate it's going now. Right, Pavlos needs to, well, he's, what? Dubin needs to turn off his steel. Yeah, Dubin does need to turn off his steel. Uh, Pavlos deciding to go aggressive against Dubin's water, which is interesting because water is both cheap and water is not actually what's making Dubin all the money. Yeah, it's absolutely just the power right now. EMPs and mutiny is really the only thing worth considering buying at this point, I would say. Things are just looking very, very bad for Pavlos. Dubin goes ahead and starts preparing for the stock purchase, buys one of his own, and then he can start buying into Pavlos very, very easily from here. That's what I do expect to see from him. Yes, uh, while we're waiting for Dubin to clean up this game, uh, Pavlos going for the nuke was probably because he noticed Dubin buying a goon. Dubin went for the old mutiny goon trick on Pavlos's uh, geotherm, hoping to draw a mutiny right back from Pavlos. Pavlos at least had the foresight to see that. Yep, certainly good not to walk into that, but not going to be enough to salvage this game, Dubin, with some very simple power plays, good use of an auctioned hacker array. Goes in and takes game number one. Yes, good use of uh, the hacker ray, the auction, also good use of the early nuke aggression to just keep Pavlos on his back foot. Pavlos seemed to never be able to recover once those nukes started raining down. And it's true. Dude, and that's man. actually something that's really important to know, what you're saying right now about the early black market, because it's good for Dubin to identify that prices were high enough, he could actually get away with using black market on HQ1 and still get through the game okay. Not yeah. always the case. No, that first nuke came really old, early, Soul 1, 1450. Yeah, and Dubin had not upgraded at that point at all. And so he was really relying on, I am going to be able to make enough money from steel that I can pay for this nuke and then keep making steel okay, despite the fact that I don't have good iron to get to HQ2, and that I managed to get all the aluminum I needed, and that I have the electronics that I need. It was just a good identification from Dubin that that was actually okay, this game. The, uh, no really need to look in the balance sheet. The overview shows the whole story of the game. 288k of power that Dubin made, paying 100k in power debt, so 188k power profits minus a little bit of interest ticks. So that only right 15k there. on interest, so yeah. easily got it done on that. I imagine maybe made, yeah, made something on steel as well, and made a little bit on food. Those were really the key markets this game, with power being the obvious power play that it was.